good morning, afternoon, or evening. Happy Mother's Day! Yay! Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome to the Not So Daily Show, the show I can see daily, except when it doesn't. I'm your host, Tim McKinnon. Joined by our guest, our special guest, our political <laughs> analyst and guy with the coolest name in the world, mm -hmm. Temba Malule. How you doing, brother? How you doing, my bro? Ugh. We're here. We're alive. We're here. We're alive. That's the most important thing. Before we get into some politics, a mega story broke this morning yeah. uh, with AKA seemingly making another wrestling entrance, but this time into a room that Nelly was allegedly hiding in. Yeah. Um, last night, we all didn't understand, but AKA put up a statement yeah. saying that there are stories coming out that are seemingly meant to sway the case a certain type of way. He knows who the people that are feeding the stories to the media are. A News 24 story, the way it's breaking, it's not on the night in question. It's actually from a previous incident that was reported of Nelly and AK having a fight. Do you think this type of news have almost any bearing on the case as a whole? It's a tough one, bro. You know, um, there's a lot of emotions involved. I mean, someone passed away, so everyone's probably feeling a bit aggrieved, you yeah. know. So but I mean, you hope that the police, when they do their work, obviously they will look through everything, everything right, accordingly. Mm -hmm. Turn every stone, you know, just actually get to the bottom of the truth, actually what happened to Nelly, you know. So I, don't, I hope things like this don't actually sway. Anything right, exactly. they should not necessarily have a bearing on the investigation, but at the same time, the investigation actually needs to be thorough, yeah. look through everything, and make sure that they don't miss anything. Yeah, because yeah. it's a big news story, and like yeah. it, that's not even the usual stuff that we talk about, yeah, but sure. obviously, because of like the weight of I think the weight of the who AK is, yeah, 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 how yeah. things happen is just yeah. like too big to ignore. I mean, look, it's a bit dodged, though, even how things happen, obviously, and I mean, that's why you can understand why her dad felt that way or feels that way in what he said in a statement so it's, it's tough bro you know so we just hope that you know the cops actually do a proper proper job exactly. and they get to the bottom of this and at least you know so both families can actually move on doesn't matter how it ends up but at least you know so both of them can actually get some sort of closure at the end of the day you know so yeah tough one yeah bro it is it is a bit of a a sticky one i mean look, when we saw the statement last night obviously we were out in the streets <laughs> and then bam <laughs> Yeah, you couldn't put two together. Like, okay, you know, what yeah. is about what we read in the morning. Only when you wake up in the morning, you see the, the article comes out. Hey, you know, and those the photos are like, those photos don't look good at all, bro. Hey, they don't look, they don't good, look good, at good at all. You know, um, I saw someone, you know, comparing it to the Oscar Pistorius situation. I don't know if it's too much of a stretch. Yeah, and last time yeah. when we said it, I got some DMs saying this is a sensitive issue, don't yeah, make yeah, jokes yeah. about it. And I wasn't making a joke. joke I was yeah. like making uh not saying it is but putting all the thoughts out there yeah, because sure. obviously there are different views on it yeah. and now they're using more similarities of somebody hiding in a room breaking through a door so it's not going to help the case but i feel like the facts aren't out and yeah. you know like i said it's not the night in question yeah, so sure. but it's scary still it's crazy bro it's crazy i mean you know um i think i saw someone actually talking about it on twitter about how relationships hard especially you don't know the type of person that you actually go into a relationship with you know obviously at first everyone brings forth their best foot yeah and then you know as you guys engage go through the motions not actually, you know the true side yeah of the person comes out and worst part is that they're in the public eye yeah. this is aka and so actually even talking about it now yeah. he's aka so obviously there's that public persona that we all see all love and all wish do you know that this is maybe who he might be? Yeah. But at the end of the day, we don't know. Is you know yeah, as a human being, he's got his flaws, we don't know. Yeah. You know, maybe this is just coming out, bro. And if it's that the case, though, justice just must be said. But at the yeah. same time, justice even for him, if... If it's not... Yeah, yeah. do you get what I'm saying? Exactly, so, yeah. exactly. Speaking of starting with a good side, that's yeah. a perfect segue to our next story, which is yeah. the ANC and the true colors coming out. <laughs> so here, let's go into the ANC. Yeah. The only organization currently doing worse than Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> The tug of war between President Cyril Ramaphosa and Secretary General Ace Mahashule has left the ANC even more exposed than Prince KB, <laughs> with people calling for the ANC to just follow in the footsteps of the ZCC and split into two, the bird and, and the star. And the star. <laughs> Evening, Mr. President. What is your response to Ace Mahashule suspending you from the party? <laughs> But speaking of serious splits, uh, Bill Gates and Melinda Gates decided to call it quits after 27 years of marriage. On the day of their divorce filing, Bill transferred 1.8 billion in stocks 
to Melinda Gates. And now all they have to discuss is which countries that they own each one is going to take. But even after all of that, one of the biggest stories that came out this week was the drama with the Zulu Game of Thrones, with Prince Misu Zulu Zulu finally being named the preferred heir to the throne. And guys, I can't complain about a guy named Misu Zulu Zulu being the king of the Zulus. It seems meant to be, bro. <laughs> but the drama did happen and it was quite a bit of a struggle getting this guy in, bro. So is showing you, look at those high caliber rifles there. Anyone who attempts to enter Wapagela Matangani Royal Palace is being told not to come. Uh, I can tell you that security is really tight here. Security is tight. And I can tell you that tensions are running high. It's bound to happen. You know, there were reports that it was. Look at. Wow. Okay. I will show you. The timing out, Kanyiso will show you. There is the glimpse of Prince Misuzulu. He's being taken inside the car. He is being whisked away by heavy security. Look at that. Look at those high caliber rifles there. Prince Misuzulu is going. Let me give you natural sound as the convoy leaves. What did, what did you think of that ceremony? Did you watch when they read the will? Yeah, I caught a bit of it though. It was a little bit hectic, you know, obviously. Guns flying. But at the same time, I think even the reading of the will, right? I think she was just following through with the wishes, maybe, of the king. Not necessarily her personal wishes. Because I'm sure the king probably would have... Yeah, because the king had said she must take over. Yeah. And that gives her the power to decide if she doesn't want to take over. Who must take over if she chose even, the first son? Yeah, I think even with that, right, her taking over obviously was like temporarily mm -hmm. until they get a king in, until they coronate the new like, king. So do you think like the Zulu nation is ready for like a queen? Because if she had lived yeah. and before Misu Zulu would come in yeah. as per her wishes, she would have to reign for a while. Do you think yeah. the Zulu nation was ready for that? I think, I mean, maybe just from what we've seen, right, obviously this from a distance, they were kind of open to it at that point. I mean, obviously, as well being a regent for the yeah. temporary time, I think they were supportive as well, especially the Amabut, yeah. Yeah, you know, the, the spear of the, of the nation. They were, you know, I think quite receptive of her. Hence, I think even now, when now that she has left us, and then now, obviously, Mrs. Zulu is coming in, they are the ones that are now also looks like they're backing him, just like how when they actually went into the palace, he was surrounded yeah. by Amabutu. So obviously I think that means there was some sort of agreement, synergy also with yeah. her reign, obviously now leading to his reign at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, bro, like we all act shocked when we see that people are fighting, people are contesting the wills, yeah. people want it to be proved. But isn't this just any, any transition of power? This yeah. comes with, it sure. will never be seamless, For especially sure. with like usually with uh, kings they have multiple wives yeah. and the wives have multiple children yeah. Yeah. and then now one of those children have to come and take the throne so mm -hmm. i feel like maybe with like the media being involved oh, obviously yeah. king goodwill was there for a long time so people yeah. don't remember how he came in yeah, but even sure. reports come out that he had to go into hiding I after know, he yeah. came in and it's it seems to be always like that but now the media is getting involved and not to be like funny but you find like white people reporting on the stories yeah, that yeah, yeah. they don't really understand yeah. and it paints a different picture to yeah. to everyone you know so yeah i think i think there is a lot of controversy yeah. but do you, it will come down eventually right for sure definitely i mean like like you said at the time when king will, king good was when he came in he also had to go into hiding yeah. and if my memory serves well um mrs zulu also was in hiding for a bit yeah. right and then he came out obviously when his father died, exactly. or before then, I'm just not sure about the timeline, yeah. but obviously he was also in hiding. Yeah. Correct us in the comment section, right? But my understanding is that a king is born, or in this situation, would be born from a wife that's of royal blood. Yeah. So in this case, I mean, I think she's sister to King Nuswati, in, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, yes. obviously now she's of royal blood, hence yeah. now she got married into the family, yeah. and she obviously, I think, was the one designated to to bear the yeah, cake. Yeah, yeah, because also they say that she was, her level was paid by the Zulu nation. Yeah. So I think that's what yeah. also um, um, 
stamps that she was married to bear the future king. Okay. It's pretty interesting. It's yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah, but I mean, you know things like this are bound to happen, bro. Yeah. They're bound to happen. They're bound to be contestations. And I think even throughout history, right, if you want to call it that, every time a new king had to ascend, there was always some sort of commotion. And maybe this is also just the... You know, stand yeah. to show that this is actually the guy who's supposed to come in. Because I think I heard yesterday, if not day before, that the guys that were opposing him on the faction and the family that was opposing him have now said that they accept him. They accept you know, him. they accept his appointment as the king. And yeah, it's just going to have to move on. So I think it's, I think that's the best solution for everyone, for the nation also yeah. right now. Especially, ah, it's a turbulent time. A turbulent having time, lost the, the father now, the mother yeah, of the yeah, nation. Is a time yeah. and then now there's all this commotion. I don't think the, the nation itself needs it. Yeah. I don't think the royal house needs it. What they I think they would probably need right now is to rally behind each other, come together as a family and then yeah. and that show that unity. Yeah. And then move yeah. through the, the tough time. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of factions, bro, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the ANC factions. Yeah. And President Ramaphosa was going into what was it? Was it the summit? Was it uh, the where, NC, where, yeah. where he was asked what he thinks of Isma Hashile suspending oh. him? <laughs> and his response was so yeah. do you think they don't take Ace seriously? Does Ace have yeah. a, a leg to stand on? Because for me, I understand Ace's case yeah. in a way. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying he's innocent. And I watched his press conference with yeah. some girl and a lot of stuff that he was saying there was going all Tokyo yeah. in a way. But it doesn't make sense for a deputy secretary general to suspend a, de a secretary general. That makes even less sense than a secretary general support suspending a president because if they had uh, talked about it, if Ramaphosa was to be suspended, it would be by ACE. Yeah. But ACE can't really be suspended by his deputy. That shows that the ANC has not actually reeled in their support to make that happen and they, they have not put the the necessary uh, mechanisms, mechanisms to for him to go out because look, it, it looked rushed. How yeah. do you just send a letter from the deputy saying you're suspending the secretary general. Well, it's a tough one, right? I think turbulent times in the ANC right now, bro. It's crazy. The ANC is it's going through the most, right? And I think that's actually playing out now in how they're dealing with the SG situation, yeah. how the SG has responded to that situation. That situation. Um, no, it's actually, there's a leak that came out, I think, last night or the today and yesterday from the current NEC meeting. And from just uh, what Tawon Beki was saying, from what President Beki was saying in those meetings, um, Dakota Lihot was saying in those meetings, Dan Matawat was saying in those meetings, you can hear that it's not right. It's, it's, not, it's right. not right. And one thing Dakota said that stood out for me was that for the past four years of this new, of the current leadership structure, they haven't been doing anything about the material conditions of the people or the black people in South Africa. They've been just fighting amongst themselves about yeah. who must do this, who must step aside, which is a dominant faction in charge, yeah. how do they now also assert their dominance. Exactly. And their dominance now, I think the what, what one way they're asserting it is by making sure Ace gets out and yeah. the people that are aligned to Ace, you know, and there's pertinent bread and butter issues yeah, and that exactly they should be dealing with issues of the economy, <laughs> unemployment, and now also the ANC is sharing jobs. They're going to share jobs. Yeah, jobs. They're not say. affording. They're getting exposed for using uh, money to SOEs to That's to to, nice to do their own That's things. Nice. Yeah, it, it, and it's, I think my, my biggest issue is that even us as a nation or as a country, we've gotten so entrenched and consumed like by ANC politics. politics that we've lost the sight of what actually really matters. Do you get what I'm saying? Exactly. What actually matters? Getting people out of poverty. Do you get what I'm saying? Infrastructure. How do we move forward the economy? We talk about the 4IR, but the only thing we know about the 4IR is that like, what is that it was embroidered on a jacket that says 4IR. Yeah. That's the only thing the communication minister has said, or telecommunication minister said. Other than that, what's going on? How do you move into the next the, the next yeah. generation? And like so it's oh, and it's sad, that's why even things like the state capture commission are looked at yeah. as a power play. I mean, uh, like I said, um, I have a lot of disagreements with Ace, but. Yeah the resolutions that they're using to to sideline him yeah. and other guys they say there was a bunch of resolutions made there yeah. land ownership yeah. you know reserve, a, bank. A reserve bank economic transformation things that we care about yeah. but they only implementing the one that one. they care yeah. about so it's like ah what is the priority here so yeah hey, there's a lot of look i think what's wrong mostly with south african politics like in general across the board is that 
it's personality politics, it's cult politics. Do you get what I'm saying? It's not ideological anymore. Yeah. So me and you on this way having an ideological conversation around what we need as a country, how do we move a country forward? We are having personality politics in terms of Tebba must ascend, Tebba must lead. It's, you know, it's, but it's US type yeah. politics. But hey, even Trump, in, love Trump. But even in that, even in that sense, when Trump was campaigning, Trump was able to outline what his positions are. Mm. He knew he was a nationalist, exactly. right? He knew he was focused on the country, moving away from globalization. Yes. On our side, the only thing we know is that Cyril is campaigning on an anti-corruption ticket. But every single day, we oh, hear exactly. about around Cyril. We don't know what Cyril's ideological position is. We don't know what the ANC's ideological position is right now. But if you look at the EFF at the same time, I mean, they have their own problems, but they have their 10 7 cardinal pillars. You know them. There they are. They quote unquote live them, right, in how they, what they say in Parliament, what they present in Parliament. Obviously, they, what we see is the noise yeah. that they make, and that's what the eyes are shined on, or the light is shined on. But now, when you hear your Floyd Chibambu in those. What, what portfolio committee, yeah. the content that they're bringing. That's, you know, those are people that, as much as they have the issues, but they know what they're talking about. Yeah. They're researching the stuff. And also, they're not in power yet. Yeah, for you, sure. You have to be honest, because if we look, we always say, ANC on paper, ANC looks like one of the best parties yeah. that could ever govern. Yeah. But now, when with the power, you're not seeing that paper come to fruition. Sure. So you look at even like the EFF, where we can't judge them because... I don't want to judge them badly because they haven't had the power, but also can't give them the props yet because right now everything is just on paper. For sure. I mean, actually having a conversation with a friend um, yesterday around Ewa Lamini, right? Being a, a customary law expert. He... I, wanted to say, <laughs> I wanted to say there because I was like, did you see he was the expert yeah, on News 24? <laughs> you know, but now, here's my question around that. How do we not judge and say he cannot be an expert on cultural matters? He's, he's a law graduate, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He's done customary law, so he probably has some sort of an understanding. I'm not saying he's an expert, yeah, but now my that. question was, what would be the difference between the Wadlamini, who has done the stuff on paper, in, and then like us here, or another political analyst or whatnot, because all of them is just stuff on paper that they've written down yeah. that hasn't been necessarily tested. Yeah. You know, to say, okay, you are lying as long as you're wrong. But in this case, whatever it was said, right, yeah. when you look at what he said and you look at what's happening or culture also, if it makes sense, does that not, not qualify him maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, yeah. they, they, they actually protected themselves. They call him, yeah. they call him an, an analyst yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of an expert. Okay, okay. But, yeah. which, but it's still you're still in a position of giving guidance, you know? Yeah. So I didn't really have a problem with that. Yeah. I just felt like, firstly, okay, in the past, since when I was at Vets and first was Fees Must Fall was happening, yeah. a lot of guys who were part of the struggle have ascended to powerful uh, places. Positions. Positions. Yeah. Vian Nipambo, uh, Nompendulo, yeah. she's an MP, yeah. he's uh, uh, EFF he's spokes, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah, and then Kebo was, I think, also supposed to be part of that, but Kebo is not from South Africa, he's from Swaziland, right? So when I saw him do the customary law things, it just looks like another hustle to get back. For me, you gotta do what you gotta do, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I find it a bit weird, but I can't knock whether it is a hustle or not. But what I didn't like, right, when I heard him give his analysis, was how politicized it was, you know, because that's not a political space. Yeah. And, and I, I do think there was also a very smart political mind, you know. That guy commands power very strongly. Like, I, I watched him when, we, when they were doing Fees Must Fall, and he was um, doing these addresses to the students. He has a very big command of power. But now I'm just also scared for him because I don't know what route you take in, if you are strong at something but you can't practice, it's like not being able to practice law in the country you want to practice it in. He can't really practice politics to the top in South Africa because they'll always go back to that you're not from, from South, South Africa. Africa. Yeah. I think also, like what you're saying, you need to be able to take off the one hat to put on the other hat. Yeah, you, you can't. Know, yeah, we all have our internal biases. If it asks me, exactly. here, we have our own biases that we think and yeah, yeah. but now when we're in front of the camera now we, we are putting the yeah. yeah so yeah that's that's for me the only thing yeah. that stood out but i also feel like he was getting unnecessary backlash from people on twitter yeah. but some people also supported him yo <laughs> okay come through guys we're doing a mother's day episode so 
uh, Mamzo is out relaxing from Cal. So yeah, so I also did see people uh, supporting him and yeah. saying, yo, he's doing what he studied, you know, yeah. and you can't just act like he never went to school just because yeah. it's political. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, one last one I wanted to discuss with you is the uh, Chief Justice situation. Uh, Mukweng Mukweng is now on long leave with how many months are left of his... I'm not sure how many like months, five months. Yeah, but the leave is thingy, what do you call it? It now coincides with until the end of his term. Sure. So, in actual fact, this nigga has resigned, bro. But He's not there anymore. Bro, don't you think this like sort of dents his legacy? Because he was there for how long? Um, how many? Do you, I think the term was what the term is a seven year term. Yeah, it's a very long term. Yeah. But his last year was very controversial. First with the uh, vaccine stuff, the yeah. 666, people wanting him to apologize. Then now he's there in Judge Pillay's application, mm. bringing up things from 2016 that he never brought up, but he's been making more news. Yeah. And I feel like that just dents his legacy because he was, for me, in the first four or five years, like, well, I don't have anything to compare to because, yeah. you know, I wasn't very um, involved oh, with the other yeah. chief justices, yeah. but he was a great chief justice. Yeah. You know, he, he, he seemed very unbiased. Mm -hmm. It seemed very, uh, his integrity never came into question. Yeah. But I feel like that kind of just dents his legacy. See, here's the thing when you look at Mohoyim Mohoyim, when he came in, there was obviously controversy around his appointment. Mm -hmm. Everyone was looking at him as a Zuma person. Yeah. You know, so obviously then, when, when you looked at, uh, looked at as a Zuma person, the spotlight was on him, his integrity was questioned until it got to a point where, quote unquote, he made a decision that did not go Zuma's way. Exactly. And then now all of a sudden, He's this guy with integrity, moral compass. And then now, going back to the two hats, obviously he's a Christian. He lives the Christian life. He doesn't hide it. He said it multiple times. That's who he is. But that now does not affect necessarily his role well, well, as yeah, a judge. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? His work as a judge. But he's not going to hide his... His Christian his, side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even with that 666, oh, the vaccine, vaccine thing, yeah. right? Uh, well, I mean, it's prayer word. After you pray, chica chica, AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca doesn't work. AstraZeneca doesn't work. You know, so shout there, that's a tick for Chief Justice, right? That's one. And then two, the Israel thing and the Palestine thing, I yeah. think that one is a very, very, very serious thing. And we have to, like, that's a whole conversation on its own for another day. I don't know, bro. Um, bit, con bit controversial, right? But obviously, being strong-willed as he is, I don't think he is going to apologize. I think he's appealed it, right? And then now, when I look at now his sabbatical, how I see it, right? I think it might be a precursor to something big that's going to happen now. And it's one of two things. He just doesn't want to be a part of it, right? And obviously, he's trying to protect his legacy in that regard. So it go, going back a couple of episodes ago where we spoke about how actually can the Constitutional Court send someone to jail? Yeah, you yeah. Know. So my I'm, how I'm seeing it, right? Yeah. I'm linking it to, to Jacob Zuma. Yeah, his sabbatical has something to do with Jacob Zuma, and maybe the decision that the court is gonna make, he probably doesn't want to endorse it or actually have his name part of it. Yeah. And I think the best thing we to do is just because from a short yeah. left and then be yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because even in the past there have been decisions made by the bench that he said he does not yeah. agree with, but yeah. because. It's a majority judgment. It's a majority yeah. judgment. So I think, yeah, his principles, yeah. he's always been straight. Yeah. I think, I mean, look, the beauty about the court, the constitutional court, is that it does allow for, obviously, a minority judgment and a majority judgment yeah. or a descending judgment, does whatever you want to call it. And that now gives you, maybe as a judge, the space to actually pen your judgment, obviously, and now put your understanding forward. Okay, this is what the other guys are saying, Same. but this is what I think. But it, yeah. you're right, it's a catch-22 for him because... Yeah. If he, he can't say, I say, let's not sentence Zuma. Well, he can. And yeah. say, but but it, it doesn't look good for him. Yeah. You exactly. know, so yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. The catch 22 is in the past, it was just simply principles. Yeah. Now, it might also further dent his uh, reputation to say, everybody thinks it's a clear cut case with Zuma, mm -hmm. but it never is. It never is. Also, to be honest, does he really, looking at how the uh, State Capture Commission has gone? Yeah. Should we really be blaming Zuma as much as we do? I don't, no. I mean, it's not. It's not right. Yeah. But there've been so many controversies that 
we can't just catapult the Zuma one and say yeah. Zuma was the only thing wrong. Zuma didn't come to. But you see, that, 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 it goes back to what I was saying earlier on that our politics are so personality driven yeah. that we were so sure or convinced that once we get rid of Zuma, all our problems all of a sudden are going to be gone. Yeah. You know, while we know that Africa's problems are structural, yeah. you know, very deep, you know, and the leadership. In... <laughs> you what? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Very deep rooted obviously in apartheid and colonialism and once we still haven't dealt with those issues so uh, you know um i think the media played a very very big role right actually let me just say not not necessarily say the media right but we were led to believe that once we get rid of zuma Everything. all our problems will be solved you know and if we're being honest we all know that our structure our problems are very structural in terms of even how business works in South Africa, yeah. you know, how maybe procurement works in private sector, yeah. you know, how procurement works in, gov- in, in government. Yeah. Things are very, very structural, right? and those are things that we cannot ignore anymore. Yeah. And with Jacob Zuma not being out of the picture, those problems are still there. Still there. Still prevalent. Some of them are worse. And some of them yeah. are worse now. So now more and more people are actually coming to a realization that Zuma, obviously, he's not innocent. Yeah. Right? But he's not really also he's not the a, source of all, all he's our not problems. not a minority problem. Yeah. But now the politics of personalities, the personality counts, where we have people who are good, who are bad. Yeah, Cyril is good, Zuma is bad. bad. These are the same people. Bad. These are the same Do you get, These are the same people, but now we have it. We, we demonize certain people and angelize. I don't even know that's a real word, but yeah. you know, it's unfortunate. And I think once as a country and as a society, we move from that type of politics into more ideological, obviously I understand the ideological driven politics also, there's almost like pie in the sky because mm. we're just thinking this is what we can do, this is how we're supposed to do. But at least that way we're able to actually have more in-depth and meaningful discussions and conversations around what would be good for us as a yeah. society. Unlike now just having superficial conversations, conversations. about Zuma, about see. BE, right? When we don't actually really, really un- have a proper, proper conversation and let us of the BE policy, yeah. what is it? What is it supposed to do? How do we now move it around, you know, to fit our problems today? Yeah, exactly. Do you get what I'm saying? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, no, it's a lot. I actually, it's we should have an episode on the BE yeah. situation. Because um, I support BE. Yeah. But I feel like, when you, like I said, when you get it on paper, BE makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Even in my own work, I've seen cases where I was like, yo, this black guy would never stand a chance of getting this job yeah. if it was not for BE because historically they just can't have that but a the abuse of be yeah. has been a problem so i think yeah. we should actually have a whole panel of the yeah. different views um and a lot of times it's like uh, a lot of my white um uh colleagues or guys that i've studied with you know they they talk about how it affects them badly yeah. uh, we talk about how um the principle of it is and at the end of the day a lot of times we agree it's like oh yeah so it was supposed to be used like that that would work, this is it, yeah. you know. And I feel like there hasn't been a conversation explaining BE to the world. There hasn't been, no, to the country. Yeah. There's also been, not been a conversation explaining tendering to the country because every country uses a proc- procurement mechanism exactly. to use the resources in the country. The government can't do things themselves. Now we look at the abuse of it and then we paint it with a color yeah. and say it's black. Then we call black businesses that work hard to come with a service that they give to government, we call them tenderpreneurs. Yeah. When this is a hard-working businessman doing the same thing that Big other businesses is yeah. doing, and we say, the BE, we look at guys when they're in the news, they're like, I am tenderpreneur, mm. BE, and that's, that's not fair. Yeah. You know, so we do need to go deeper into understanding what is BE, how do, how do governments across the world procure services yeah. and products, and just, yeah, I think that's a, mm. a very good point. Yeah. But yeah, we should definitely set a proper episode yeah. for that, but for today's episode, I think we are all good. Yeah. Boo boo. Do you want to say bye to everyone? Mm. Say bye on the camera. Okay, see you next week. See you next. See you next week. Tell them to subscribe. Subscribe. And like. Subscribe. And like. And comment. And comment. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> okay. Bye.